The rules and even the vocabulary of football tell us a lot about how the game has evolved. Why do rugby players kick the ball over the posts instead of into them? Why are touchdowns called tries? Initially, the players tried to score a goal from open play. You would kick into the posts from as far away as you could. As you progressed towards the post, sometimes you got to the goal line and you may have to go over the goal line, which made it very difficult to kick into the post, obviously. You would put the ball down, which would give you the opportunity to then try to score a goal. So in early days, in the first England match, 1871, England lost to Scotland by one try to one try and one goal, because we got the try but we missed the goal. Um, so right up to the 1870s, this was the way of scoring. Um, the evolution of the goal posts, it's a, it's a bit hazy, but from what we can gather, the goal originally was as other football codes like soccer, whereby you had to go into the goal, you scored the goal into it. Um, at rugby school, they used the junior boys as goalkeepers because it gave them A, a chance to learn the rules of the game, and B, an involvement, which didn't involve getting actually in the middle of the melee and getting killed, because they were so small. So they would give them the job as being goalkeepers to learn the rules. And it took about three months to learn the rules. Um, because they were goalkeepers, it became very difficult to score goals through the goal. This is what we've been told. And so eventually they changed the rules. It was all very flexible. They changed the rules to go over the bar. That was to score the goal, not into it. It became so difficult to score through all the goalkeepers. As mentioned, the first rugby international took place in March 1871, England against Scotland. This was a 20-a-side game. It wasn't until 1875 that the 15-a-side format was adopted at the universities, and another two years before it was seen in an international. As rugby developed into more of a passing as opposed to a kicking game, the ball the game was played with also changed. Initially, the size of the ball was dictated by the size of the pig, who supplied the bladder. This pig's bladder was then encased in leather. At first, the emphasis was on kicking goals. You scored more points for kicking the goal than the try. At that time, the spherical shape of the bladder suited this rugby kicking game. But as passing developed and back play increased, it was felt important to develop a more streamlined shape. Now, what happened was that in the 1850s, a chap called Linden was making balls um, and he used to employ his wife to inflate the pig's bladders by mouth with a tube. Unfortunately, one day she inhaled by mistake. She, she contracted an awful um, lung disease and died. This gave him the impetus to go out and invent a rubber bladder, which could go into the balls. Therefore, by having that, you could, you could regulate the size and also, importantly, the shape. So that's where you get the modern streamlined shape, which everybody wanted to enable them to pass the ball more easily. So you go from the, rub, from the pig's bladder to the rubber bladder. The Rugby Football Union was formed in 1871. A number of London clubs got together to form an organisation to govern the game, protect its best interests and, of course, field a national side.